Hi, and uh, welcome to this video where I present the paper, The NFA Accepted Hypothesis, Non-Combinatorial and Dynamic Law Bounds, which was accepted to ITCS 2024, the Conference on Innovations in Theoretical Computer Science. This is joint work with Carl Brinkman, Alan Grundlund, and Marvin Kuhnemann. Okay, so in this paper, we look at a classic problem called NFA acceptance. Right? So it's really a classic problem concerning regular languages that you might have heard of in an introduction to a theoretical computer science course. So here in this algorithmic problem, the input is a non-deterministic finite automata in NFA, call it A, and a string X. And the question that we have to answer is really, uh, does this NFA accept the string X? And if you don't recall exactly what this means, I'll try to remind you in, in these slides here. So basically such an NFA has a start node and an accept node, and then the edges on, on these nodes uh, that are labeled by characters. And what we say is that uh, the string X is accepted by this NFA if there's a path from the start node S to the end node T, the accept node T, where every step that you take, uh, if you take the ith step, that edge that you follow has to be labeled with the ith character of your string X that you're testing for acceptance. Okay, so this is a really a path from S to T where the labels on the edges that you follow match the characters in X. And in this case, right, these automata that we care about are non-deterministic, which means that on any given a node of this automata, there can be multiple edges that are labeled with the same character. Right? So, so really we're asking whether there's some path that leads from S to T in this NFA. Okay. So if we want to solve this problem, there's a very simple uh, algorithm for it. And it basically goes as follows. Basically, you loop through the characters of X from I equals one to the length of X. And then what you're trying to maintain is a set SI that represents all the nodes of the NFA that you could have uh, ended in after following the first I steps of, of using the first I characters of X. So you do this, you build these sets SI one at a time. And at the end of it, when you're done, you just ask, is the node T, the accept node, uh, in uh, the final set, the one the, among the set of nodes that you could be at after following all the characters of X. So, so basically you initialize this as zero before you start anywhere, you're in the start node. And now you would like to compute as one, the set of nodes you can reach after following the first character of X. So you know that the first character is a zero, so you can follow the two edges labeled zero here, which means that your set is one. It's now these two nodes uh, that we have uh, marked in red here. Then you move on and compute S2 from S1. And so we see that the second character of X is a one. And then we follow all the one edges leaving the, is the set as one. And you can see that these two edges point to, to two nodes. And which means that our new set is two after two steps uh, are these new red nodes here. The third character is a zero, which means that the two new nodes we can be in are those that are pointed to by these two uh, edges here labeled zero. And so this is our S3 and continues on. And the fourth character is a zero, which means again, that two edges that leave the current set, giving us two nodes for S4. And finally, uh, the last step here, we have to actually take a step from zero. So which means that the only node we can be in after uh, following these steps is the, the uh, node T. And now we have the final uh, node here. We've processed the whole string. Uh, the, uh, X and we have the final set of nodes that we can be at and we can ask is the accept node in the set and indeed it is in this case so we should accept the string X. Okay so if we look at the running time of this algorithm then we can see that computing each of these sets uh, SI plus one if you already computed SI it basically takes n squared time right the size of SI is at most n so it's all the nodes of the graph you have to follow all the outgoing edges there's at most n squared edges in total in the graph so you will basically take n squared time to compute the, the new set SI plus one. And so if we say that the string X has length K and the total running time of this is like N squared times K. Okay. So very simple for straightforward algorithm. Okay. So a natural question to ask now for this NFA acceptance problem is, can you solve it faster, right? In particular, can we say, shave off a polynomial factor from this running time, right? Can we do it in a, n squared times k raised to one minus c for some constant c greater than zero, right? So can we shave something like a polynomial factor from this runtime? And first of all, maybe what's known already for this problem and basically there's no faster algorithm known, right? Maybe you have some polylog factors that you can shave, but definitely not a polynomial factor that's not known before. Okay, so, so what else can we say? Maybe can we use the tools from fine-grained complexity, fine-grained hardness, 
I had one of these conjectures, the strong exponential time hypothesis, orthogonal vectors, three sum, all pairs path, any of these many established conjectures to say something about the hardness of this problem. Right? So throughout the talk or the rest of the talk, I'll assume familiarity with this fine-grained hardness uh, area and these conjectures in particular. Okay, so what can be said, right? So if we start from the strong exponential time hypothesis or the orthogonal vectors problem, it is known that if I uh, look at sparse NFA, so meaning there's only order and edges in the NFA, uh, then it's known, uh, if you believe the strong exponential time hypothesis, that you cannot solve this acceptance problem in less than n times k, you cannot do it in n times k to the one minus c. You basically need nk time. This is implicit in previous works by Bakuas and Indic. And so, so this says something about the if the if the NFA is sparse, uh, you have some lower bound, but really we're after a stronger lower bound here, right? We're basically looking for an n squared lower bound, but it's also a dense NFA in, in our example, right? So so really the strong exponential time hypothesis doesn't really seem to give us uh, a lower bound that matches uh, the known upper bounds. It only gives us something uh, slightly weaker, but which holds for a sparse NFA. Okay. So one can also say that probably there's no so-called combinatorial algorithm for this problem that is fast. So what does that mean? So combinatorial, I guess, is a term in this area that's uh, been used quite a lot. It basically means that it's not using fast matrix multiplication tricks. So it's kind of like an undefined notion, but uh, pretty well accepted. And basically one can show that if I had a combinatorial algorithm for NFA acceptance that would actually beat N squared times K, then I would also get a combinatorial algorithm for the K-clique problem that beats N to the K time. Okay, and this is generally conjectured that it's not possible to do combinatorially. You can do it faster using fast matrix multiplication. And this reduction is also implicit in previous works, among others in this backwards and Samos from 2017. So in summary, right, we know that okay, we, we're probably not going to beat n times k. And this holds even for sparse interfaces, followed from strong Milstein hypothesis or orthogonal vectors. And also, we're probably not going to beat this runtime with a combinatorial algorithm. Okay, but what if we, you know, run a non-combinatorial algorithm? What if we try to use fast matrix multiplication in a clever way? Can we beat this this runtime? That's still open. Okay, so what we propose in in this paper is to introduce a new hypothesis, a new hardness conjecture into the fine-grained hardness landscape. And basically, this hardness conjecture says that there is no n uh, squared times k algorithm. Uh, where you raise this to one minus c, right? So you cannot shave a polynomial factor from n squared times k. And this uh, conjecture is basically saying it's not conditioned on being combinatorial or anything, right? So, okay, so basically saying this naive algorithm that we saw in the beginning is optimal. Okay. Well, of course you can say, well, it's easy to just conjecture something. Uh, so why why would we care about this new conjecture, right? So, so this is what we introduced. We have an NFA, we have a string X, and the problem is really, can you, is there a path from S to T? Uh, yeah. Obviously, is this an acceptant? Uh, is this NFA accepting this string? And we conjecture that you cannot beat this naive algorithm by any polynomial factor. And then we introduce this new conjecture to the to fine grained uh, complexity. And the question is really, why do we want a new conjecture? Right? Do we really want even more conjectures to base hardness on? And I'll try to say a few good, give a good few good reasons for why we want this new conjecture. Now, so first of all, uh, the hardness of this problem. It does not seem to follow from previous conjectures. I won't talk about it here, but in, in the paper, we actually show uh, good reasons to believe that there's no reduction from uh, the strong exponential time hypothesis of our vectors that implies our conjecture. Okay. Now, what I'll try to talk about here is also this uh, benefit of introducing this new conjecture is that uh, you'll get tight lower bounds for a whole bunch of dynamic uh, problems, so maintaining a dynamic data structure. And these lower bounds follow from a static problem, like where the whole input is given in advance, even though these are dynamic problems where operations arrive one at a time, which is quite surprising, I think. And the second reason why is that you also get new tight lower bounds for a bunch of other problems, where before you only had combinatorial lower bounds, but now we actually have non-combinatorial lower bounds. So these are the main reasons to, to consider this new conjecture. Okay, so let's look at the dynamic lower bounds first. So a classic conjecture to prove lower bounds for dynamic problems is the online matrix vector conjecture. So in this problem, the online matrix vector problem uh, introduced by Hensinger et al. in 2015, the input is a Boolean n by n matrix m, and then you receive vectors v1 up to vn one at a time. And you have to output the matrix vector product uh, bef mvi before you see the next vi plus one. So it's a dynamic problem. You don't know the future operations. And importantly, uh, it's a Boolean matrix multiplication here. So multiplication is an and, and addition is an or. 
So basically you can see that if I multiply M with V1, what's really happening is I'm, ta I'm taking the last two columns and then I'm oring uh, these two columns so that give me an all one vector and so on, right? So it's basically multiplication with and and or. Okay. And so what they, they said in this original paper is they introduced this conjecture saying there's no uh, algorithm that is a polynomial factors faster than n cubed for processing such n operations. And this has still not been refuted. What they also showed in their paper is that this OMV conjecture is shown down here, implies hardness of a whole bunch of problems, right? And this is just in the original paper and there's been lots and lots of reductions since then for other problems as well, right? So this, this conjecture really explains the hardness of many, many uh, dynamic problems. Okay, good. So what we show is that if we introduce this NFA acceptance hypothesis up here, uh, this NFA acceptance hypothesis implies the OMV conjecture, implies the hardness of uh, online matrix vector multiplication, and thereby indirectly implies the hardness of all these other problems. And I think one very interesting point here is that the while the OMV problem is an online problem, the vectors arrive one at a time, in our NFA acceptance hypothesis, you have the whole input up front, uh, and still somehow this can imply the hardness of these dynamic problems, which we think is, is quite interesting. So, so let's try to, to see how that goes. So let's uh, so let's give this a reduction, right? Let's pretend that I have a solution for the online matrix vector multiplication problem, and let's try to use it to solve NFA acceptance. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct two matrices, M0 and M1, that will both run this OMV solution on. And what they're going to look like is basically the matrix MI is basically the adjacency matrix of uh, this NFA but you only keep the edges with label i and then we transpose it basically so so let's try to have a look at what this looks like so so what is m0 this is just a part of the matrix i'm just looking at the nodes labeled a, a b c and s uh, the, the matrix is bigger right it has a row and a column for every node and so basically what i'm saying is that the the column corresponding to s has a one for all the nodes where there's an edge from S to that node, right? There's a label zero. So there's a node for, there's an edge from S to A, which is here, right? There's a node from S to B, which is here. So this is just this adjacency matrix transposed. And similarly for M1, right? There's an edge labeled one going from S to C, which you can see down here. And there's an edge labeled one going from C to B, as you can see up here. Right? So we have we construct these two matrices, and now we want to use, uh, we run an OMV algorithm on these two matrices. And so how are we going to use it? So basically, we're basically just gonna run this previous algorithm here. I recall the simple algorithm right where in every step, we just kind of maintain the set of nodes that we could be at after processing the first i characters of x. So we want to try and simulate this algorithm using this OMV uh, solution. Right, so, so basically the idea is to say, well, at the i-th step, we will have this vector vi that we'll be using for matrix multiplication will be the indicator for the set SI, the set of nodes that we could currently be at. So in the beginning, right, the very first vector is just the one zero 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 vector, right, because the only place we can be at after no steps is the start node. And then in general, the observation is if I take um, my matrix MJ, either M0 or M1, and I multiply it with VI, then the resulting vector is just an indicator of all the nodes I could uh, be at if I take one step away from the, the set SI, using only edges labeled with J. So let's try to see. So if we look at M0 up here, let's assume somehow I have an indicator vector that says I could be in node one and node, uh, node S and node B. So I multiply this on to, to the matrix. So what happens is I'm basically oring the two columns corresponding to these two nodes, and which basically gives me an OR of the, of the set of nodes that S can reach and the set of nodes that B can reach. So. I can now reach A, I can reach B, and I can also reach this node that B points to down here, even though it's not part of this matrix, just to make the example smaller. So this result here is really an indicator vector, calling it, it's longer here, it also has an entry for, for this node here. It has a one in all the entries here, corresponding to nodes I could get to if I take one step away from, from these nodes using edges labeled with zero. And so now to simulate this algorithm here, using matrix vector multiplication, right? I, I just want to compute these sets as i one at a time. What I do is just I say, okay, well, my v0 is just the, I can be in the node s and nowhere else. And then for every character of x, I just say, well, what is the character that tells me what, what are the edges I'm allowed to use in this step? 
So I just take that corresponding matrix and I multiply it with the set of nodes I was in the previous step to get the set of nodes I'll be in in the next step. And then finally, when I'm done, the final vector is the indicator of where I could be after processing all characters of X. And then I just check whether the, the entry corresponding to the node T is indeed a one. Okay, so what this shows is really if I have a T of N time algorithm for OMV, then I get a T of N time NFA acceptance algorithm uh, just by uh, just by simulating this algorithm here. And this is for the case where the length of uh, the string is also N, right? Because we're doing, uh, if we want to do N matrix multiplications, we are looking at strings of, of length N. Okay, so... If we have our new conjecture here, right, that you cannot beat n squared times k time for NFA acceptance, then if we insert k being n, we basically get that, well, there cannot be an OMV algorithm running in n to the 3 minus c time, right? because that would, by this reduction, get an n to the 3 minus c time for NFA acceptance, and this is not possible. So, so the OMV conjecture is really implied uh, from our static problem, this NFA acceptance problem. Okay. Good, so this is just a summary of what we said before, the new conjecture, what are the reasons for uh, looking at it? And let me just look at this last reason, right? That we also imply a new tight lower bounds for uh, other problems where we previously only had combinatorial lower bounds and these new lower bounds are not combinatorial. I think this one example that I look at is the so-called word break problem. I think it's a cute question. The input here is a dictionary D and consists of words with a total length of M. And you also have as input a string S of length N the goal is to figure out whether you basically you think of the S as you have forgotten to put spaces in your string and you have to figure out, can I put spaces in the string so that the resulting, um, so that every word in this new text after inserting spaces occurs in the dictionary. So let's try to see here in this example. Well, maybe you could start by, if this is our S, you could start by using the word thesis and then maybe you could put the terror here from the dictionary. Oh, but then you don't have anything that uh, matches the, the last suffix here. So because this was not a correct way of putting spaces. Maybe you could try to, you could start from the, the other end. Or maybe you can use H's here. Maybe you can use the. Maybe you can use sister here. But then we have a problem here. This, this R is not covered. And finally, okay, we could also start with the. We could do sister. We could do rages. And then we actually managed to split the string. So indeed, the answer is yes to this instance here. Okay, so that's the word break problem. So what's known about word break? Uh, this is an, in previous work of a subset of the authors of this work uh, from 2016. We showed you can actually solve this problem in basically n times m to the one third time. This is a super weird running time. Uh, n times m to the one third. And really surprisingly, in that uh, same work, we showed that there's no combinatorial algorithm that shaves off a polynomial factor from this, right? So this is really optimal as long as you don't use fast matrix multiplication tricks. We're still open whether you can beat this running time by using fast matrix multiplication in a clever way. And if we use our new NFA acceptance hypothesis, it actually implies a tight lower bound of saying that n times n to the one third is tight for any type of algorithm, also uh, non-combinatorial algorithms. So just in summary, right, the main contribution of our work is to introduce this new Hartness conjecture, the NFA acceptance uh, hypothesis, that we cannot beat n squared times k time by a polynomial factor for a determining acceptance of a string on a non-symmetric finite automaton. And the main applications really are uh, that you can you imply this online matrix vector conjecture from uh, the static problem. You get a bunch of Hartness results for dynamic problems from a static problem. And also you get new non-combinatorial lower bounds for, for several problems, also ones that I didn't uh, mention here. So that was a quick summary and thanks a lot for, for listening.